Welcome to Capgemini Invent Talks. In this edition, we talk about our World Energy Market Observatory, our Remo report, which we recently brought out. I'm talking to Lars Faug. Welcome, Lars. And first question to you, Lars, is a general question. What are the global trends that you see and how do they apply to the Dutch market? Well, it was an interesting year. Uh, so the Remo report is something that uh, we publish every year. So I'm thrilled to, uh, to tell you about uh, what we saw last year. Uh, quite some fluctuations also in commodity prices. They are increasing again. But we even saw in oil that uh, prices uh, were below, uh, below zero. The energy companies in, uh, in Europe uh, were quite resilient during the pandemic. Uh, they even reached an, uh, an average EBITDA of uh, 21.7%. So I think that uh, that's, that seems quite interesting, but the market is really challenging at this point in time. We see that um, carbon prices are rising, which is good uh, to also invest in, uh, in renewable. We even saw that uh, more and more countries are also uh, take part of the ETS and also trying to reduce uh, carbon uh, more and more. I think it's very interesting. The pandemic has shown us uh, what the world looks like if we use less energy. Yeah. This has also accelerated all global discussions. Mm -hmm. What can we learn from that in the Netherlands? Well, we see, if you look at, at, at Paris Agreement, uh, trying to reach, uh, let's say, not beyond the 1.5 degrees uh, increase uh, of temperature. Mm -hmm. We saw during the pandemic that we really declined and air pollution was also uh, a lot improved. What we also see is that if you look at all the pledges and regulations, uh, we seem to reach 2.9 degrees incre uh, Celsius increase, which is double the, the ceiling that we have set. So it's still something to worry about. And, and it's, if you look at the Netherlands, we're also lacking a little bit behind in general, and uh, some other European countries are catching up a little bit uh, quicker than, uh, than we do. And about the, the clean energy mix, do mm -hmm. you think that a 100% clean energy mix, is that a utopia? Well, I don't think so. I think uh, I'm, I'm, I'm positive on that, although it's, it's, it's still a challenge. Um, we see also over the course of the years in the WEMO report that the, the share of renewables is really increasing at a rapid, uh, rapid pace. Uh, solar, also where we project uh, still as uh, the most dominant one globally, followed by wind. But we see also some other renewable uh, sources uh, coming into play, like uh, biofuels, biogas, uh, all kind of storage, not only in cars, but also more large scale. Uh, carbon capture storage is something that we also see, and hydrogen is something that uh, a lot of uh, companies now are uh, looking at. And, trying to uh, establish their position in that, uh, that market. But next to the renewables, we also see quite some um, uh, companies, more from a technical point of view, trying to facilitate that market uh, with IoT and sensoring and uh, automation. So we see that uh, more the, the, the hardware and the software are, um, are becoming uh, more combined. Um, and also we see a lot of clients of Capgemini that we help on these kind of combinations, reaching zero emission strategies, connected towards new business models. So that's uh, something, a trend that we uh, see. So I'm, I'm, I'm positive, but it's still, still a stretch. Uh, good to hear. We also see that policy makers are setting more and more legislation to facilitate the energy transition. What more is needed? Well, for instance, if you look at uh, the grid, the grid companies, they really are, an, of course, an essential part of the, uh, of the energy transition and to, to facilitate also the renewables. Uh, we see globally a lot of money going into the renewal and maintaining the grid, but also to make it possible to have more bi-directional uh, uh, traffic uh, and also to help facilitate all the large-scale but also small-scale renewables that, that are fluctuating uh, and it provides a lot of tension on that, uh, on that grid company and the grid companies. So they are, we expect that they will spend more than 400 billion in just a few years' time uh, just on, uh, on renewing uh, the grid. Uh, a difficulty there is to get the, the right workforce in, 
to train them, to recruit them. Uh, and there's also a difficulty that some of them are uh, also having some boundaries uh, from a more country perspective. We also see that in the Netherlands that uh, it, it seems to be hard to get uh, more room to maneuver to really invest as a grid company in this. Mm. Uh, so that is still uh, a, a, a discussion also in the Netherlands to, uh, to move forward. But, but they are really essential. So, um, yeah, and, and grid companies uh, is one, uh, one yep. part. What does this mean in terms of transformation for the incumbent energy retailers? Yeah, so the, the, the report is also looking at uh, re, uh, incumbent, but also some new players. New players have, of course, Greenfield, but they have to, to move in towards the, uh, the market or to gain um, a market uh, uh, share. The incumbents, they struggle sometimes with uh, the, the IT system, the legacy system, but also uh, not always a digital native competence. So they we see that they have to focus on, on, on operational excellence, but next to that also focus on all kind of breakthrough new business models. And that's all, always difficult. Um, good examples are there, uh, the ones that are really focusing on, uh, on a more agile way of working and, and having an, an, a more digital native workforce on one hand, and trying to improve also the cost to acquire, but also the cost to serve. Ideally, somewhere 15 euros a customer, but also really focus on uh, all kind of customer journeys um, and new business models can be derived. We see some examples of those companies that are helping their clients uh, reaching a more uh, zero emission business. So we see these kind of new business models around uh, helping others as well to become climate neutral, uh, becoming more dominant. And we see the ones that are more aggregating uh, and, and enabling also prosumers uh, and energy communities in an, in an sort of ecosystem. We see also uh, some good examples in that market. So um, it's an interesting market also for energy, uh, energy supply companies there. Thank you, Lars. I think it's very interesting that there's not a single more interesting market than the energy market today. If you are interested to download the report, you can do it now. Otherwise, you can reach out to us.